thunderstorm last night got this tree in the way. I was trying to tried to move it by hand, but All right, been on the water for 20 minutes. I did not film the beginning of the journey. I was a little, my nerves were ramped up and I was concentrating on not forgetting anything. And if you can kind of see behind me, we got some poor weather. There's a, I guess, memorial for a park ranger who died in the 40s. Here, I believe he got stuck in a snowstorm and was not able to make it out. And this is the view to the big lake. Well, I've done all my portages for the day and I'm about two kilometers from where I'd like to camp tonight. And I heard a little bit of thunder, so I'm tucked into shore. You can see possibly where my campsite is. It's getting downpoured on right now. Well, poor weather's coming in, it's raining. And I'm in the area where I was looking for a campsite and I think I'm gonna stay on this island. All right. Night. Night one, camp tour. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, so I made good time. Got the canoe flipped over, set up my barrel hang, food hang, since we're in bear country. I have to take that down for dinner though. The site is very open. The wind is whistling through here which is good for bugs, not good for weather. So I've kind of tucked my tent away in a tarp, in case I have to cook under the tarp. Here, there's my tent. And I'll show you how luxury the backcountry camp is, because you've never truly been backcountry camping unless you use a thunderbox. Well, the sun is out. The wind is still high, drying things out, which is good. Um, I'll show you my dinner setup. I got uh, Andrew's stove with some fuel. And tonight, pastel Fredo, freeze dried. Well, morning one complete. I've had breakfast, washed up a bit, got back into my traveling clothes. Well, on the water before eight o'clock. Oh, sand. Well, this is my first portage video and I'm attempting my first double carry portage. Which means I've already hiked this one once with my food bag, food barrel, sorry. My daily bag has all my camera gear and snacks and stuff for easy access. Both paddles I took first load. Wasn't too bad. Now I carry my shelter pack, which has mainly just my shelter and clothes and sleeping bag and stuff like that so it's not too heavy um, and the canoe so we will see this is a 1400 meter portage Side of the boat. This is exciting. At this point, I'm making a 
I am actually making it across the lake. Although at a much slower pace than I'm used to right now. Let's keep going. Hey now, relax later. I don't want to be sitting around thinking I could have done better. Forty-five minutes later, I rounded the point, and I'm now going with the wind. Thank God. If I weren't going downwind, I wouldn't. I'd be heading straight to the north right now. No, it's windy. And the wind blows the rail off the way. I'm literally riding these two three-footers, and they're pulling exactly the direction. down. Last time I came through here, I had to well, duck. Pretty sure this is going to be home for the night. Look at this. I'm in the sun. Got to camp early. Quarter after one. Decide, you know what? It's a nice day. I'm going to set up my hammock. To have a sleep in my hammock tonight instead of the tent, so I'll probably sleep better. And I got a thunderstorm rolling in. Good morning, day three. Just left the campsite. 7.55 again this morning. I'm pretty sure I've been taking pictures all morning. I just did this portage uh, with my first set of gear. I was gonna plan on triple portaging it. Walking down the trail, seeing fresh bear scat. 100% foot and distance. 100% bear scat. Hello! Yo! I'm coming! Woo. Hello! Making lots of noise. Trying to sound big. Sound like a big group. People. Give that bear. Lots of notice. Oh. <laughs> I am not gonna miss that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can. I can get through that. I'm going to get through that. I ain't carrying this stuff over top. Mm -mm. This ain't a portage. Oh yeah, that's cool. There you have enough room for a paddle. Oh. Little change of scenery.
We're in tomorrow territory. <laughs> I pushed on. I feel good. I felt weird because I was in the boat for so long and then like got to Laurel, Laurel or whatever it's called. Two o'clock, like, oh, I gotta get up, move camp to paddle for four hours tomorrow. Why not just do it today and probably do it in three hours because the wind's good and tomorrow's supposed to be junky wind. So <laughs> I did not see this tunnel here under the rail rail line. So this must be it. I hate that whole not really knowing. I'm just uh, checking my map. It says I do have to pass underneath the rail line. So I mean, this must be it. Ooh, spooky. Wow. Well, morning of day four. I have kind of got a mess happening around me. I'm just going through all my gear. I went through all my dinners. I packed a freeze-dried meal for each night with a snack and uh sidekick and i can't even eat the sidekick every night <clears throat> so uh just so full so i dump those out and then hopefully make some uh less uh more room in the pack i'm gonna put more stuff in the barrel as the barrel is uh starting to get lower i'll try to keep the barrel maybe as my heavy pack and uh that way when I double, if I can double carry the every portage, my red pack gets lighter and lighter as I start putting more stuff in the barrel. And the portage will become easier and easier, which will be good because <clears throat> I'm getting into longer portages, so. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see me. I'm coming down the Petawawa River, first portage. And it is steep. I mean, this portion that I'm coming up to here, I'm about 50 feet off the up off the river, and like one false step, I'm at least breaking something. Good, you? Super. You got your GoPro set up, huh? Yeah. What are you filming? Oh, uh, I'm traveling across the park. Nice. Do you do a YouTube video? Or I'm, I'm planning on it, or at least one so I can show my family and whatnot. Yeah. Do you want to meet us link? No, uh, I started at uh, Kawaweimog Lake, Access 1. Yeah, North Peter. Yeah, yeah I yeah. go on the big lakes like Kiosk, Cedar, and then I'm going to go uh, up White Partridge Creek over to Acre. How long are you in? 12 days. Nice, buddy. Well done. Yeah, I didn't want to do the Petal River just by myself, and I don't have too much white water experience. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know where you go from here today. Uh, Radiant. I'm a day ahead of schedule, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just came from Radiant. It's pretty chill for here yeah, there. Super chill. But oh, then nice. between Radiant and La Bay, but you're not going to that way. Where are you going after Radiant? Um, well, whatever takes you to the Crow River. Oh yeah, you are going that way. Yeah. There are some dicey spots in there. Okay. That were tough to navigate. That we had to get out of the boat and walk it through the rocks. Gotcha. Uh, I'll be probably lining any rapids or stuff like that. I'm not going to take any chances. Yeah, Every yeah. portage I'm taking, yeah, that kind too. of thing. We got so. a little thin baby boat. <laughs> Makes you a little, little yeah. Take a Every hit rock and stuff, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. That's hardcore, buddy. We thought we were hardcore. Every, every time I think I'm hardcore, I need somebody to be more hardcore. Well, I don't usually video me portaging. Cause it's kind of the last thing on my mind. I'm like, it's hard work. I'm dripping sweat. I'm double carrying everything. 
this for time's sake and also too i mean if you do it twice it's hard work if you do it three times it's hard work but you travel more and take up more of the day so the worst portage of the trip so far slippery wet rocks everywhere Just waiting to have an ankle rolled or broken and hills for days <sighs> probably about halfway on my second carry of two carries on this portage it's probably one of the hardest things i've ever had to do oh i am so happy i did not stay at laurel last night the wind is coming from the south just like the app said it was i would have been i would have struggled all day to get up cedar and now I get to take the wind at my back again across Radiant. Like, I, can, I, I just hope I can keep her going at a pace. Like, I'm a day ahead, wind at my back. I am out on open water right now, so I have to have my wits about me. But, I mean, these waves are almost taking me to a string of campsites, so... Intentionally beached myself. It, uh, when your wind's at the, when the wind, wind like this is at your back, you don't really realize how quick you're going. I looked down, I could see uh, the ground was coming up. Oh, there's a campsite right here. Day four, we're at Radiant, still a day ahead. I'm gonna be a backcountry pro tip. If you get some paracord and twist it up, you can have a clothesline with no clothes clothespins. All right, yeah. Here I am, turn, turn your brightness down on your TV. I just wanted to show you. Got my little solar panel battery bank charging up. Got this lovely area to myself. Using the paddle selfie stick. First portage of the day. First carry of the day. 8.30 in the morning. Petawawa River. I'm uh, feeling better to be hiking with pack on. My back was a bit tense there this morning. And I was like, just starting to get into the really remote part of my trip here. Forgot to show you my, my dancing shoes. Had to gorilla tape them. <laughs> Falling apart. I'm gonna have to go and uh, switch to either bare feet um, in the canoe and then put my boots on for the portages or just wear the boots. But I mean, having a dry set of clothes, dry socks, dry boots that haven't even been worn other than at camp, it's such a morale booster because, like, you're wet, sweaty, stinky. 
you get to camp, put on dry clothes, dry socks. Oh, just raises your spirits. Oh, you could have, I could have even stopped here and port portage from there. But no, this wasn't a bad one anyway, so. Yeah. So hopefully my water shoes hold up. And uh, we'll go from there. Day five of 12. Upside down pilot gun. I'm gonna officially say I did some rapids on the Petawawa River. <laughs> Who cares if it's the end of the rapid? Still counts, right? That was just a little rapid. I'm guessing many probably do. Does it look like I'm having fun? Again. I'm sure this will be the last beaver dam. Right? It doesn't look like anybody's here. This is the only campsite for about two and a half kilometers. Hello. Uh, I uh, pulled up to this beautiful campsite here before this portage and hemmed and hawed about whether I was going to do it or not. And uh, totally not thinking, like, okay, I'm going to stay here. So, what I, sorry, before I decided I was going to stay here or not, I stripped down put my camp clothes on because I just was sick of being wet so I was like all right camp clothes on boots on because no matter what that way I can make the hike if I want to go to the hike the 2.2 K right now like tonight at 4 p.m. it's now 6 get it done tonight a little bit more progress in the trip or whatever heard from Emily that the ranger cabin is available on the 6th I was like, like I'm not really gonna push to get there on the six. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I figure, you know what? I pushed hard enough today. Did a lot of portages. So I stripped down, got changed, didn't have anything set up, and it just started downpouring like wind and rain. Got my camp clothes wet. My boots are wet. I do have swim trunks that are dry and two sweaters that are dry but uh totally caught me off guard went to go hang my i got the got uh so i'll show you over here i'm underneath my hammock tarp i got the tent set up 
I went to go hang the barrel barrel, the food barrel. And uh, yeah, tree fell over. As I was, I was walking the portage there looking for t where to hang my rope, I heard it snap and I looked over and I was trying to figure out did I need to move or run or anything. It had fallen the other way, but I wasn't 100% sure if it was a tree or not. I didn't know if it was like a bear that jumped down out of the tree and like took off, crashed into the bush. It was loud. And that just freaked me right out. So it was kind of, that's how I got wet. Because I didn't want to be in the tent if there was something around. But now I've, I'm in good shape now. I got this shelter up so I can cook dinner. I'm going to cook dinner, hang the barrel up. That'll be a day. My clothes for tomorrow, absolutely soaked. Well, good morning. Day six, Crow River. When I'm done this portage, <clears throat> I gotta make breakfast and stuff still. Uh, I've done this 2.3K portage. I'll be on White Partridge Creek for a couple hours, navigating its twists and turns and several forks, which I have to figure out which do I go left. I think I go right. Okay. Check this out. All right, here I come. Oh boy. Oh, I'm getting stuck on a freaking tree. Yeah. Easy dozer, easy dozer. Yeah, let's get her. Oh, the uh, whenever the back of the canoe hits a rock or something, it throws the weight forward, and you kind of go forward with it and you gotta try to put the brakes on. Well, I'm at White Partridge Creek. That was the longest portage completed so far in the trip by about 800 meters longer. <laughs> uh, this creek, I don't even know, it's kilometers though. I'll be traveling this creek so I'm really hoping the water level is not too low. There's not an insane amount of beaver dams or something like that. I know I'm gonna be getting wet. So I'm doing the horrible, put the wet clothes on that were out in the rain all last night, but I can't afford to get my other pair of pants wet. They were just a bit damp. I can hang those out to dry and I'm not having my only two actual pairs of pants both wet. Oh. All right, White Partridge Creek. This is the first 10 meters of it. <laughs> Very claustrophobic feeling, but ah, oh. yep. Rocks and logs strewn. Oh, wow. So. already jammed up and I've heard which is true because I've already got about three spiders on me that uh, these alders just oh, carry spiders that just as soon as you hit the branch they just jump and attack again see if I'm going the right way here I've got the GoPro lanyard lanyarded to the canoe so 
so she ain't going anywhere. Oh, this is difficult. I should have got my single paddle. Oh, we're about to have some spiders in here. Is this? Oh my gosh, this isn't even the right way. No way. Oh. This, is, this is fun. I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to be able to turn around. Yeah. You stay right there. down the spiders in this thing. Oh. <laughs> Smack the GoPro right in the water. So this is day six and this is literally my first time using the uh, single paddle which would make some traditional canoeists roll in their grave but I've gone six days without using a proper paddle. But this is too tight in here. I got to I got to go single paddle. That kayak paddle is this is actually kind of nice. Why haven't I been doing this earlier? So be that it may. Very interesting. Do you feel like you are remote enough, Colton? Come on, tree. I can't hold this beast back. <laughs> I guess you can. Come on. Come on. Feel gross going through those alders, all those spider webs and spiders crawling all over you. Come check out how I. Uh... Oh. This is White Partridge Creek at its finest. I'm like. Creeks just choke right off. I'm really struggling to make any forward progress here. I'm going to switch between paddles consistently. Oh, I actually didn't even get to film the worst of that. I could do just everything I could to get through it. So we'll see. Oh, well, guess what? Seven hours, 15 minutes. Let's make it down the White Partridge Creek. So after my long day, <clears throat> my seat broke. And I seen some guys with some fishing boats. Nah, just came up here to Asked them if uh, anybody had some tools to fix my seat, and uh, I'll show you what I found. <sighs> oh, 
Oh. If it's all right, I can pitch my tent. I'll be gone in the morning. Well, before we really. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Cold beer in the middle of Algonquin. <laughs> Cold beer and french fries. Yeah. Yep, fish and chips I had today. And a cold beer or two. <laughs> One more, George. One more. You, you'll get it. <laughs> you'll get Ready? it. Ready? One, two, three. I'd like to be in some dark hollow where the sun don't ever shine than to be here alone knowing that you're gone would cause I bet you when you woke up this morning, you weren't expecting this yet. <laughs> no, not at all. And I'm going to tell you something. Hey, neither did I. The more you drink, the fucking more better we're going to be. Thanks, everybody, for the hospitality last night and the dinner and whatnot. Drinks. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Yes, thank you.
over today and tomorrow. I don't have very far to travel today, but I have to climb a massive hill and I'm going to suffer from the drinks I had last night. I'm going to have to pay for that today now, but when you have gone six days without talking really to anybody, to getting off of fish and chips and beer, how do you pass that up? I'm gaining like four or five hundred feet of elevation before the rest of the trip's all back downhill. So from tomorrow to be day eight, I will lose 702 feet of elevation over the course of the rest of the trip. My heart's racing. I'm tired. Doesn't help being hung over at all. That was stupid. I mean, it was fun, <laughs> but not very wise decision. Those guys are so nice. They're like, yeah, you can throw your canoe on the wagons because they were leaving. Like if I would arrive today, they wouldn't even been there. Nobody would have been there, but they're leaving today. And they said, oh yeah, throw your canoe on here. We'll take you. Our road passes close to North Branch drop you off or we can take you right out whatever you want to do and I was like no I'm good I'm gonna make it under my own way I would defeat the whole purpose of this trip from border to border if I jumped on a horse wagon with my gear and got a free day's worth of travel out of it that's not that's not how it's supposed to be done so all right I can't remember when the last time I did a video was so here we are this is my current happenings. I got my water. Oh, water's boiled. Got fire going. Today sucked. I was hungover. I'm exhausted. I have a ginormous portage ahead of me tomorrow. And I have two more days until I see the guys. It's going to be tough. The first part of the portage is going to go uphill, and then it's downhill for the rest of the trip, for the most part, <clears throat> overall. I'm going to try to get a good rest tonight, a good long sleep if I can. Put some K's down tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm a dummy. I don't know if you can see that. I had the, my bear spray in my pocket. I lost the cap days ago. It fell off. I was putting the barrel down, fucking pepper sprayed myself. Luckily, I only got the whiff of it. I didn't get it in my eyes or nothing, but. Probably not good to have on your skin. I should probably get changed. Oh. Lovely. All right, Colton, look for that ugly yellow sign that has a big number written on it. All right. That took two and a half hours. Uh, I feel good other than the my leg where the bear spray I got my leg. It's burning like really bad. I put polysporin on it. It actually hurts even more now that I stopped walking. Uh, hike 9k already today. I'm gonna do another 4.7 with the canoe now. It's not gonna. It is going to be. It's going to take everything I have. Oh, it's like a bear spray. It's really hurting my leg. Hopefully I'm in better shape next time I video. I'll show you some of the portage if I can. Bear it. Uh, there's two beaver dams that you gotta cross. It's pretty interesting, but. All right, this is the beaver dam I had to cross. Just wanted to show you. Oh, hello. 
welcome to the ending of my second worst day of the trip. Day six being the worst, White Partridge Creek, which turned into one of the best. The end to today, where I sprayed bear spray on my legs this morning when it was in my pocket. So if anybody's wondering, bear spray, I just believe this has that like a pepper extract or something there. Well, it burns for about three hours. And then if you don't realize, if you haven't cleaned it off everything that it sprayed, it starts burning again. So my forearms and my right, right thigh burning all day. Bear spray. It's like somebody pulled boiling hot water on your skin and then it just stays like that. They keep pouring it for three hours. That's what that feels like. I did a 4.7 in two and a half carries. I had to go back. I dropped the, I've been dropping the canoe halfway through or three quarter of the way through my second carry. Just can't do it today. I did 4.7, three and three and a half times. A 1.5, three and a half times. And now uh, this is my last 1.5. So I'm one lake ahead of where I would have been tonight originally. So no cabin tonight, but a little like tomorrow I got an easier day now because I pushed it a little bit longer. It's uh 530. So I'm gonna stay on green leaf tonight. Well, good morning, day nine. Let's see the boys today. I am beat and I am so happy. Tomorrow is a rest day. I'm probably gonna be a boring friend. <laughs> Other than my stories I can tell. I am taking it easy. When I get there tonight, taking it easy. Tomorrow, taking it easy. Gonna heal up, rest up. Well, I am officially on the way to Lake. I will be paddling by myself no further. I will be part portaging by myself no further. I will be by myself no further. is now. I've only approached campsites and portage landings for nine days straight. All right, we're here. Got some cool implements. Some moose and deer horns and here we go. This is very exciting. <laughs> so much so much stuff, so much stuff left in here. Very hard, rugged, ruggedness. Here the boys come. <sighs> so cool. It's like uh, 20 after five, I was getting a bit nervous. <clears throat> but I'll get a video in the game. All right. Morning and day 10, we're having real food. Danny, Matt and Andrew here, Dan's doing his usual awesome job cooking up the bacon. Matt helped carry in. <laughs> Andrew as always, this is gonna be meant for him. We're having, I had real food last night, <laughs> steaks and mashed potato. This morning we're back to real breakfast, and then it's back to the freeze-dried meals. But that'll be all right. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well, day 11. For the most part, pretty good. I'm down to one lens and my sunglasses, so they're pretty much useless. I lost them somewhere today. But I'm paddling with the boys. So no more aloneness. And it's quite beautiful. I think Matt and Dan are possibly gonna call it a day today and hit the car instead of the next campsite. That's okay. Andy's gonna continue on with me on the journey. 
into the very east side of the park, which means I will have paddled and canoed over 200 kilometers, and then including my over 35 kilometers in portages, I believe, triple carrying or double carrying at the minimum, will be over 90, close to 100k of hiking as well as the 200 plus the 200 of the trip, full travel. So. I'll do the math when I get home. I'm excited. I'm going to turn the camera around now so you can see what I get to paddle. Of course, I could have paddled this if I left Acre and I could have done it in three hours. Yeah. 12 days, but I got to see a lot of other cool things too. Well, we're one step closer to Acre. One 90 meter portage away from quitting if I wanted, but that is not an option. Well, and then there were two. <laughs> Andrew and I are the only one tough enough to continue the struggle. Nah, I'm kidding. Dan and Matt decided cold beer was their cup of tea for tonight instead of this. Nah, uh, I had no choice but to continue. And Andrew being a good soldier, I did the same. Now I have one night left, night 11, we'll be going down the Barren Canyon. Well, good morning, day 12. I made it this far. We've got about 14 kilometers to go to the finish line. Andrew and I, starting the day with about two kilometer in total portages, and then scattered throughout the rest of the day is another kilometer. But we'll be traveling down the Barren River, which is going to be beautiful. Nice way to finish the trip. And uh, we've heard reports that the water level is a bit low all the way to Squirrel Depot. So we'll see what kind of a challenge it is to get there. But one way or another, we're getting there. This might be one of my most favorite paddles of the trip so far this little area. It's nice. Alright. Got a new angle for ya. This is called the GoPro right beside Colton's face angle. This is what portaging looks like. And our first portage today was a very nice. They don't get much better than the one we had this morning. Pretty much 90% flat, some downhill section, no uphill sections, a little bit rooty, but nothing too treacherous. This year is a 330 meter portage, and it is considered short, which we're all about that. And we got two long portages, relatively speaking, a 750 and a 640. And then everything under, after that for the rest of the day is under 500 meters. Paddling the beautiful Barren River. I get ready to take this much of this river as I can. One more portage on my trip. I don't even know how many portages in total I've done. I know it's over, I think it's over 35 kilometers. I think, I have to check that, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's like 34 kilometers or something. Over 200k completed. Last portage for all the naysayers. He did it. Out of all the paths, this is the one you're gonna I snap really an ankle on. So rocky. <laughs> yeah. No, you killed it, man. Yeah. Oh. Any words of advice for people that might do this trip? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe consider it a couple times before doing it. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. <laughs> go to Squirrel Rapids, uh, go see the Barren Canyon, then go home. Yep. A few hundred meters to go. Almost 
don't want to be over as much as I want to be over. And that is the end of the journey. Peace.